Morning everybody. Still pretty early in the morning here, still waking up. And man, what a nice spring day it is right now, man. It's super warm outside today. Um, you can tell spring's on the way. You know, we had all that cold weather last week and I'm gonna guess, God, it feels like it's 60 degrees right now. So things are gonna be changing a lot. And with that, with these warming temperatures, spring coming on the way, I wanna want give you guys some of my secret spring shaky head tips that I really think is gonna help you out over the next month or so. So I'm going to share that with you guys today. And hey, before we get into it, um, some of the stuff I talk about today, if you guys are interested in it, you can order it uh, through Tackle Warehouse. And uh, if you could, use the Fish the Moment Tackle Warehouse link that I've included in the description here, because when we do that, Johnny and I get a small percentage of his profits, and it really helps us out a lot. Much appreciated. So anyway, you're going to get into the shaky head deal. You know, shaky heads, man, I just love fishing them in the springtime of the year. It's probably my favorite time. Well, it is for sure my favorite time to fish them. Um, it's one of those deals that when you get in the right situation on the right lake, it can produce tournament winning bags in the spring. Even though it's a finesse technique, um, there's something about the shaky head during the early spring and even up until the time they get on the beds that it produces numbers and it produces good quality fish. In fact, I don't know of another bait out there in the springtime of the year that produces that combination of numbers and quality that a shaky head does. So I'm gonna go through my system that I've developed for springtime, um, start to finish, and I'm tell you guys all about it. So let's get into it here. First of all, um, Shaky heads, one of the things you have to consider and what we're going to talk about primarily in this video is I'm going to talk about um, head sizes and the bait profiles. Now, later on, we're going to get, I'll get, I'll do some other videos as far as using them at different times of year um, and different profiles and different heads at different times of the year. But for this particular video, I want to go over what I use in the springtime of the year and I'll explain to you why. First of all, um, I'm gonna show you, there's three different baits that I use, and I'm gonna show you the rigging on it, um, different head sizes. The first one I use is just a four inch finesse worm. This is just a Zoom finesse worm. Whatever your favorite finesse worm, it doesn't really matter. The second one I use is a longer one. This is a Zoom trick worm. So this is all six, six or seven inch worm. So it's just a bigger worm and I'll go into that. And the third one I use is a four inch soft plastic stick bait. And I'm going to explain to you when I use that. So first of all, let's get into the uh, the four inch finesse worm. The four inch finesse worm is sort of the workhorse if you fish a lake that has all three species of fish. If you're fishing a lake that's got largemouth spotted bass and smallmouth bass, this is when I like to use the four inch finesse worm because it catches all three of those species better than a larger one. The key on this, which you want to remember uh, when you're fishing it during the springtime of the, the year, which a lot of people don't use, is you want to fish a really light head, like a, a 16th of an ounce head. Here's a, a typical eighth ounce next to it. Let me see there. I go to a 16th of an ounce head, and I like a rounded type hook on it. So the way I rig this is you always want to bite off just a little bit off the off the end to have a good flat place to set you know rough your worm up really important on shaky heads because you're dealing with having to put hook through plastic so anytime you're having to put hook directly through a thick piece of plastic you, you really want to rough up the egg sac area where it comes in at so take my 16th of an ounce head and here's another important thing you want to remember on shaky heads is when you come through it you don't want to come through very very far you come through the flat side of the worm, you only, you're only coming through like a 16th of an inch, you know, not very far like that. Because if you come through too far, what's gonna happen is it bunches the worm up on the shank of the shaky head and it makes the bait not look very realistic right around the head of it. So barely come through, turn it through like that and there's always just a little bit, little bit of a gap there. See, see the uh, the little uh, part of the lead right there that's exposed on the shank. You always want that lead through there because that provides a good keeper for it. And then with the shaky heads, you want to come all the way through the bait. And once you come all the way through, bring it back, take it out and do it four or five times. You know, just come back and forth 
out of there four or five times. And what this does is it makes a channel in that bait to make your hook penetration a lot easier. And eventually, after you do that four or five times, this is the way that you want to set it up. See that point is barely pointing out. This is still extremely weedless and the bait's still straight. But what happens is I use this bait on six pound test, six pound test a lot. And since I've got the channel has been opened up by me going in and out of the hook a lot, and I've got that hook barely sticking out, um, all I have to do is just lean into those fish when they bite it um, and they, it sticks them really good. And then the final thing that I do is um, got my red fingernail polish out again. I usually do this beforehand, but I'll just show you guys just for the sake of the, the video. Always go with your red fingernail polish on the heads. And this is my four inch finesse setup uh, in this early spring up until the fit time the fish spawn on lakes that have spotted bass, smallmouth, and largemouth together on it. 16th of an ounce head, four inch worm, um, roughed up, round bend hook, six pound test line. Um, this particular setup, you know, I'm fishing it around anytime those fish are starting to move up into their spawning areas. Um, when they're in that 10 foot of water and less, my favorite way to fish this little 16th of an ounce setup is um, I go back into the coves and I'm looking for those transition areas where the banks go from steeper to flatter a little bit. And the, key, the big key on this worm, it's not necessarily the four inch size, even though that does help, but the big key on this bait is the 16th of an ounce head. That 16th of an ounce head makes that bait just it doesn't fall very fast. It just sort of glides down like that. And there's something about it when those fish are getting ready to bed, but they really like that slow fall, particularly the smallmouth and the spotted bass. So that's my number one rig. Okay, the second rig is gonna be similar to that, except this is sort of um, a lake that's gonna do better for you for, for smallmouth and, and, and spotted bass because of the profile of the bait. And that's when I go to the four inch soft stick bait. So first thing I want to do with this, the stick bait, since it's, they're fairly large, you want to rough them up really good. Get them really, really pliable. Most soft stick baits, you know, there's a lot of salt in them. So you want to get them really rough. And the difference that I have on this is this bait is, the soft stick bait is still, um, it's still designed for those fish that are real close to spawning in shallower water, and I'm still using the 16th of an ounce head. But what I've done on this head, here's a, I've got the 16th of an ounce head, and I've went to the O'Shaughnessy bend, which is a little bit wider gap. So let me, let me show you here the difference. This is the same head size, but you got a different, uh, it's a different bite gap on it. It's a little bit wider. And you need that little bit wider gap on the soft stick book bait because you have more plastic to penetrate. So I'm going through the same deal, just barely come through, 16th of an inch. Um, I think this one right here, as far as the, the brands on it, um, this is a Bite Me brand. Uh, the one I just showed you is just some generic brand. I can't remember the name of it. But again, notice that right there. See that piece of, of the keeper sticking out? It's really key that you have that keeper in there like that sticking out. Another thing I'm gonna talk about these keepers, and I forgot to mention it, is I do not like the shaky heads that have the screws in them. I never use them. You know those type, type that you screw in like that and keeps them in there? The reason I don't like them, and most of the top, all the top shaky head guys I know about, David Dudley, Aaron Martins, these guys are really good with shaky heads. None of them use the screw in because the screw in it, to me, it, the bait does not look near as natural when you rig it with the screw in when you're working it on the bottom. Also, I don't think you have as good a hook penetration with it because what happens here is the worm will break away from the head when you set the hook a lot of times and on the, on the screw in it doesn't. So um, my recommendation is that stay away from those screw head shaky heads, go to the straight ones. So anyway, make sure that comes through like that. And then I'm coming through again a little bit. And it's really important on this time is you come back and forth, back and forth five or six times th through the plastic to get this really roughed up here because you've got a lot of plastic to, to penetrate. And the final thing I'll do is right where the point comes out is I'll bite 
put just a little bit of awe but because I'm since the plastic is so thick I'm wanting to have a little bit of a channel provided for those so that's the way it looks right there it's still weedless it's in that channel but I've bit off a little bit there that allows me for a little bit more uh, better hook penetration so there's my setup for that situation I'll show you the difference here and the and the time that I'm using this is like I said if I'm fishing those lakes that have more largemouth in it so here's my two finesse setups on the 16th of an ounce head the soft plastic stick bait on a 16th ounce head falls really slow it falls almost like just using a weightless Senko. and guys I'm telling you what when you when those when that water temperature gets in the upper 50s and those fish are on those flatter banks you can't beat these four inch shaky heads on the 16th of an ounce head and again I'll uh, you know paint the head red on that so the final one I'm using um, this is a setup that I use a little bit more in the pre-spawn before those fish start to move up on the flatters, the flatter banks, and that's the bigger trick worm, a little bit larger size. And again, got everything roughed up on it. The difference is, is I'm going up in head size, I'm going up to an eighth ounce size. Uh, this is a, this is one of my favorite shaky heads. Again, I buy these at Tackle Warehouse just like you guys do. I don't, nobody gives them to me. This is a Davis Lures shaky head. It's got the O'Shaughnessy hook bend on it, which I really like, and I really like the head on it. So, start out again. I'm gonna bite the head of the worm off. It's really important to bite that head of the worm off because it gives you a flat area for the head to seat against. Up through there. Again, you know, got my lead on there. And through there, like I said, back and forth again. And again, I've got my hook point sticking out like that. So that's an eighth ounce uh, zoom trick worm or any six or seven inch trick worm. And the key on these right here, like I said, the, the bigger worm is more when those fish are staging. Those fish are staging on those secondary points. They're staging on the steeper banks. They're staging in those areas right before the lake flattens out in the back of those coves. I'm using the bigger shaky head, usually deeper water, usually like 10 to 20 foot of water, um, you know, in those staging areas. I, I'm, this time of year, I'm usually like going from the jerk bait to the crank bait to the shaky head, eighth ounce with a six or seven inch worm, and eventually I'm winding up, you know, with the shorter four inch worms. So anyway, guys, that's my three systems. Um, four inch soft, four inch soft stick bait, four inch uh, finesse worm, 16th of an ounce head, Zoom trick worm on an eighth ounce head in deeper water. And just give that a try. I'm telling you guys right now, it's one of the best baits you can use in the pre-spawn and up into the springtime of the year. When you tie a shaky head on, you're not fishing for little ones. I mean, there's a lot of tournaments won in this part of the country right here on a shaky head in the springtime of the year. So it's definitely something you need to be trying. I'll get into tackle how I fish it later, but most of the time I'm using six to eight pound test line. We'll get into those at some later videos. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. If you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. And we'll be back tomorrow with another one. See you.